Hey everyone, so uh, I'm going to make a video talking about how to solve factorable inequalities and I'd like to start out with a step-by-step -step on how to solve inequalities uh, of the kind that we're looking for, the ones that we can factor. So let's talk about step one. Right? So with step one, what you need to do is you need to make sure that everything in the, in, in the inequality is on one side of the inequality. Okay, So sometimes you're going to have an expression on one side and an expression on the other side of the inequality. You want to make sure everything's on the same side of the inequality so that basically it's going to be everything is greater than zero or everything is less than zero or so on and so forth. Okay, So that's the, your first step. So to move everything to one side of the inequality. Step two. Well, you're going to find the roots of the inequality. So once you've moved everything to one side, you're going to have some kind of polynomial expression, right? You're going to find the roots of that uh, that polynomial expression, which basically means you're going to have to factor it, okay? So the reason why we're going to be doing this is because of the fact that at the roots, the function is equal to zero. And once we've moved everything to one side, we're basically trying to figure out where some polynomial is bigger than uh, or less than zero. And we know that the function changes from being bigger than zero to less than zero, or from less than zero to bigger than zero. Bigger than zero. We know that that occurs at the roots, right, at the x-intercepts. So we want to find out where those roots are. So step three, we're going to take the roots and we're going to uh, create different, uh, different intervals, okay? So um, the idea is that those x-intercepts uh, separate um, the x-axis essentially into a couple of or a few different intervals uh, where the function could be positive or where it could be negative. Now, uh, let's, for example, suppose that one of the roots was at negative 1. Um, one of the intervals that we would be considering, right? let's say that negative 1 was the first uh, uh, root anyways, the smallest root. So one of the intervals that we would be considering is all the values of x that are, uh, say, less than negative 1. And the reason why we want to consider all the values of x less than negative 1 is because since, uh, since that's, uh, negative 1 is our first uh, root, we know that uh, everything uh, less than negative 1 has to either all be positive or all be negative. It can't, it can't switch from being positive to negative or negative to positive because then we would have another x-intercept. And since I said negative 1 uh, is our first x-intercept, it's our first root, uh, we know that there's not going to be one that occurs before it. So... That's why we use the roots to create intervals. So then we have step four. So we choose uh, x values somewhere within the intervals that we create to test if the function is negative or positive. So again, we care about whether the function is negative or positive because after step one, we are now checking to see where some, some new polynomial is bigger than zero or less than zero. So essentially if it's positive or if it's negative. Okay. So the test values will tell you uh, essentially where the function uh, is bigger than zero or less than zero. Okay. Um, and then last step, step five. So you're going to state the intervals uh, for which, uh, like that, satisfy the inequality. So, for example, for some of the intervals, you're going to get a positive answer, uh, and suppose that the inequality you were solving was looking for uh, where the the uh, the expression was bigger than zero. So those would satisfy the inequality, but the ones that were negative would not satisfy that inequality. Okay. Now, if we if we had a different inequality, which was you know we had some sort of polynomial expression is less than zero, right? That would mean we would be looking for negative values, in which case you would want to take the negative ones because those would satisfy the inequality. Okay. So this is a step by step guide on how to solve factorable inequalities. But how about we take a look at an actual example? So let's suppose that we wanted to solve x to the power of three minus four x squared plus x plus six is less than zero. So uh, our first step is to make sure everything is on the same side of the inequality, which in this case it all, all already is. So we don't really need to move anything around, right? We've already kind of got our inequality um, looking almost the way that we want it to look, okay? Because everything is less than zero. Um, so the next step is then going to be to find the roots of the polynomial expression. And that means that we're going to have to factor. Uh, so since I know that we've spent a lot of time factoring, I'm not going to go through all the, the details on, on how to factor this polynomial. Uh, and I'm just going to jump right to the factors. So in factored form, we get x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 is less than 0. Okay, so after we factored. Uh, and that means that we have certain roots, right, or certain x-intercepts. So I'm going to write the x-intercepts off to the side. Because remember, that was the goal of factoring, right, was to find, uh, fi find the roots. So the x-intercepts are going to be at x equals negative 1, 2, and 3. And um, 
I like to rate these in order from lowest to biggest, from, from least to largest. And the reason why is because it actually helps us set up our intervals, which is what we're going to be doing next. So since negative 1, x equals negative 1, is our smallest uh, uh, root, what we want to do is we want to see what happens to the expression when we pick an x value which is less than negative 1. So if we pick something less than negative 1, what's going to happen? Okay, That's something we're going to want to consider. We're also going to want to see what happens um, between negative 1 and 2. Okay, So somewhere between negative 1 and 2. We don't actually need to check what happens at negative 1, and we don't actually have to ch check to see what happens at positive 2, because we know that those are x-intercepts. We know the function will actually be, or the, the expression will be 0 at those values, so we don't have to check what they are. Uh, we're also going to want to see what happens between 2 and 3, and we want to see what happens uh, when we have values of x which are bigger than 3. Okay, so this is going to help us set up our intervals. So our first one was checking for values that were smaller than negative 1, so we're going to say our first interval is x is less than negative 1. Our second interval was values between negative 1 and positive 2, so we're going to write that out as negative 1 is less than x is less than 2. Our third interval is values between 2 and 3, so 2 is less than x is less than 3. And our last interval is values bigger than 3, so we're going to say x is bigger than 3. Okay, so now that we've separated out into intervals, what we're going to do is we're going to see if the function is positive or negative within these intervals. So remember, it can't be both. It's either going to be all positive in a, in a single interval or it's going to be all negative because otherwise we would be introducing a new root, which we know there isn't a new root. We've, we've got all three roots. So let's see what happens when x is less than negative 1. So we pick a value less than negative 1. It could be any value less than negative 1, and you'll get the same, the same result, essentially. So how about I pick uh, negative 2? So I sub that into the equation, and it doesn't actually matter uh, if, you, uh, if you sub it into the factored or unfactored form of, of our expression. But let's see what happens when we, when we sub in uh, to the factored form. So we get negative 2 plus 1 times negative 2 minus 2 uh, times negative 2 minus 3, and when we multiply those, th uh, well actually I guess we should simplify first, so negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, so we have three negatives that are multiplying together, and we know that when you multiply three negatives together, you should get a negative answer. Now, we get a negative answer by subbing in a value of x which is less than negative 1. Well, if you look back up to the inequality at the top, we're looking for uh, essentially where the function is less than 0. We're looking for where the function is negative. And that means that any x value which is less than negative 1 is going to satisfy this inequality. So uh, this is actually going to be one of the solutions to our inequality. Okay, let's take, the, take a look at the next interval. So negative 1 is less than x is less than 2. So we need a value between uh, negative 1 and 2. So 0 seems to work fine, so let's sub 0 in. So we're going to have 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 3. When we multiply, or actually simplifying first, I guess, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So I have a positive times a negative times a negative, and when you multiply a positive by a negative by a negative, we should get a positive number. So it actually doesn't even really matter what, what the number is. We, we care if it's positive or negative, really. So since for any x value between negative uh, 1 and 2, uh, if we sub that into our expression, since we will get a positive uh, value and we are looking for negative values because we're looking for where the function is less than zero, this is not going to be a solution to our inequality. Okay, so let's take a look at the next interval. So between 2 and 3, uh, 2.5 seems like a pretty good number to sub in, right, for, for this case, because that's between 2 and 3. So we're going to have 2.5 plus 1 times 2.5 minus 2 times 2.5 minus 3. 2.5 plus 1 is, of course, 3.5. 2.5 minus 2 is 0 0.5. 2.5 minus 3 is negative 0 0.5. So we have a positive times a positive times a negative. And when you multiply those together, you get a negative number. Okay, so that means that for any value of x between 2 and 3, we should get a negative value, which means that this is also going to be a solution to our inequality. Okay, let's check the last one. So x is bigger than 3. So I guess we could choose 4, I suppose. So uh, 4 plus 1 times 4 minus 2 uh, times 4 minus 3. 4 plus 1 is 5. 
4 minus 2 is 2, uh, and 4 minus 3 is 1. We have three positive numbers. When you multiply three positive numbers, you get a positive number. And again, we need negative numbers. We need our uh, polynomial expression to be less than 0, which means that this is not a solution to our inequality. So the only solutions to our inequality are going to be x values which are less than negative 1, and x values which are between 2 and positive 3. Okay, so we have the solutions. Let's just kind of write them out now. So we can say, uh, so if x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 is less than 0, then x has to be less than negative 1, or uh, x has to be between 2 and 3. So 2 is less than x is less than 3. Okay, guys, so this is how to solve a in uh, factorable inequality algebraically. Take care.